As Avalanche hits our first target just under $100, it is time to reconvene and see what's likely next for this very impressive asset. With that said, welcome back to Elio Trades channel. I'm your host Crown again today with some nice and slow paced TA. But it's all good because we have a nice and fun one today following up on Avalanche, of course. Before we get into it, I should also let you know that I have a link in the description in to my own channel. I have my own channel, which has a link in the description of this channel. Yeah, there you go. Sorry, English difficult for me today, uh, where we do daily Bitcoin analysis and some altcoins here and there as well. If that interests you, then you're more than welcome to hang on out a little bit more faster paced as well. Anyways, let's waste no more time. Let's make this one nice and short and let's follow up on Avalanche since we last spoke. When we first spoke about Avalanche, we were way back on over here in October, where it was putting in a series of higher lows. We had one, two, count them three, and that was my signal for looking at this one as very likely reaccumulation and actionable relatively soon. Now, with that said, I don't want to confuse you with these terms. Of course, just these higher lows right here with the same highs on this trend line, just around $80, was essentially a ascending triangle. And again, all these formations just boil down to trend. That's really all that you have to know with them. And buyers were getting more aggressive. Sellers weren't pushing price down uh, as much. And well, who wins at the end of the day? More likely that the boo laws do. So again, always thinking in terms of statistics and probabilities. Probabilities were on the side of the boo laws. And we had a measured move right here. That was a technical target of just around $100 of which we have a current high of today of $99.90. So good on that one. But what's next? Is it likely to end here or is it likely to continue onwards and upwards? Well, first things first, I do wanna point this out. If you watched the Crown Cross video on this channel where we spoke about this particular strategy right here, you'll notice that this became an actionable, well, essentially long trade, not this financial advice, nor my financial advisor, way back on over here and follow through is imminent, if you will. Anyways, I want to preface this next part by saying, hey, there will be ebbs and flows on this asset, obviously. And I would go as far as saying that what we're going to speak about next is not going to be invalidated, meaning that the next few weeks to maybe a couple months, as far as targets go, is not going to be invalidated unless if AVAX comes back down and closes a daily specifically below about 78 bucks in the until then, I do want to bring up something else that we identified last time, of which we have our, uh, we actually have 12 hour RSI right here, giving us another drive of hidden bullish divergence right into the bullish control zone. Some of what we saw back on over here and over here, both some pretty impressive runs, very similar to what we saw back on over here in January of 2021 during this monumental run. Now, that is incomplete in and of itself. The more important thing that we were focusing on last time was, of course, our volatility indicator in the top pane here, the BBWP. And as you saw, we contracted deeply into this prior uh, higher low right here uh, with it over the course of about, yeah, about uh, two, three months there from end of September to beginning of November. So I guess to count this out, about one and a half months right there, which is significant for this asset and very comparable to what we've seen in the past back on over here when we got similar low volatility reads coming out of the macro base from July. A little bit more time was spent on the lows there. So to be fair, the result is expected to be more. However, still from that point to the actual next major high was just around 400%. Now, yes, things did reverse there for a second and found their way a little bit higher over time. But I want to focus on this for uh, for the time being. And actually, if we take it from the prior low to that high, well, it's more like 450%, which is rather impressive. The other time where we saw a very similar setup with, that resulted in an upside move was way back on over here in December of 2020. From low to high on that first move was about 400% as well, very similar to the prior one. And then, of course, after that, I mean, it was a continuation move. And so it is relevant, although... Kind of uh, an outlier, I'd say 1700%. I'm not looking or insinuating that we're going to get anything resembling that for right now. But the RSI signature right here, very similar to what we saw coming out of this space over here. And I'll actually, mark, I'll actually just move this over to what I'm talking about. Again, right here versus right here. You see the hidden bullish divergence. And even on this drive right here, I mean, this was another 40% move, actually. Very interesting. So... Now that we actually do have the breakout and the follow through on the shorter term timeframes and we have hit that $100 target, 
right around the one spot 6.8 Fibonacci extension right there, which actually do a little bit better. There we go, right around there. Well, how much percentage gains have we had from bottom to top of this rally thus far? About 100. Okay, that's really, really good. Obviously, doing a 2x since we first spoke about it is always going to be considered rather good, <laughs> of course. But you can see that it's a bit of an outlier compared to the last few iterations that we have had on this particular asset, as they have been getting around a minimum of 350% and a maximum of ridiculous percentages. So with that in mind, let's just play around with numbers here. Where would 350% put us around? It actually put us around about, about $225, which is rather a lot. <laughs> Anyways. Let's take this one step further before we get into some uh, next next price predictions, which, by the way, is that am I just am I am I saying that we're going to have a, a move like this? <laughs> Hold on. Let me get my my brush. Boom. <laughs> like that. Very unlikely. What's more likely is that we'll see a few ebbs and flows along the way. Perhaps even we see a dip uh, relatively soon. Anyways, here are the areas that I'd be aware of in the short term on a continuation drive. And we are going to um, outlay continuation conditions soon here. However, the next area of interest would be between about 123 and 130, right here. Put this one. I would be looking for a pullback from that region and perhaps a bit of a very short term pullback at around about a buck 11. Okay, so let's go and look at momentum on the daily, which daily stokes representing momentum will actually be crossing back up any sort of a closure today above about $93, currently trading more than three and a half dollars above that area. Not only that, but it also called this out as well. We do see a nice trend line regression coming into the current area where we see daily stokes as well. Five day stokes are obviously upside angled as long as above 84 and a half and weekly, which is also going to get another closure today is also above, sorry, is also angled to the upside as long as we are above 77 and 30 cents. And also by daily and imagine 12 hour fresh crossing up. Yes, indeed they are. Okay, great. Let's talk about what to expect over the next couple of weeks. Well, let's overlay some continuation conditions. First and foremost, what do we see over here on the weekly Bollinger Band chart? Again, another volatility indicator. We've already looked at momentum and we already know that trend is to the upside. Well, we do see a closure above the top side Bollinger Band here, which is basically right under $100, actually. So if this happens by end of day, as we do have a weekly closure tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time, then I do look for trend continuation alongside volatility expansion, momentum we already see to the upside as well. And that would imply that over the next few weeks, perhaps uh, you know around early to middle of December, I would be looking somewhere around those next set of targets over here, anywhere between about you know low 120s to 135 or so. Something like that would be about right. Whoops, wrong chart. However, do I think that things would stop there for the macro? Uh, no. If we draw a macro extension here, so now we're talking you know, maybe end of year at earliest, probably more like January, February of 2022. Then realistically, as we spoke about before, the one spot 618, whilst a good stopping point, which we did, you know, see a bit of a short term daily consolidation around here, is usually not going to be a long term macro top area. And what's more likely is probably one of these over here. Fiscally speaking, the, the two spot 414 and the two spot 618 Fibonacci extensions are sniffling more likely. Now, back to our prior conversation where we were playing with percentage gains based off of volatility reads. You'll notice that around those levels at especially 245 or 250, we see that that's about a 338% gainer. Very consistent with what we saw on the last two iterations of that. Last two only iterations, I should add as well. Go all the way up to 320, well, that's 469%. A little bit more on the upper end there. But I would say that, again, assuming that the invalidation condition is not met, which we'll talk about soon enough here, long term, around the highs of the cycle, I would be looking somewhere between about 250 and 320. Again, months away. Short term, assuming that the weekly does close above $100 at the end of today, I would be looking for that next move up to a buck 20 to a buck 30, very likely a short term pullback around that region. Okay, cool. So what would invalidate this? I think we've spoke a little bit about it over here. Let me just rehash this. So short term bullishness will be negated and invalidated with any sort of a daily closure below about 79, 78 bucks. 
Long term, macro bullishness will be completely negated and we will be talking about big moves to the downside. I'm talking about back down to $30 or so if and only if we see a weekly closure below our last higher low at $55. Until then, I do look for this one to work its way sideways and up from here. There will be, of course, pullbacks and ebbs and flows along the way. But for right now, the long term does look quite good. Short term, do we see a pullback right here? Probably relatively soon. Again, that's not the focus of this video. We are talking weeks away. With that said, I'm going to shut this one off. I want to once again let you know that, of course, we have our Bybit link in the link in the description below. I do want to once again say, hey, if you're new to trading, don't leverage trade. It's not wise. There's no reason to do it. Trade a testnet or a paper account. There's no reason to rush in. Get experience. You can test out your strategies without actually risking finances. If you are already experienced and you already have success, then yeah, go ahead and, and do the buy bit, assuming that it's relevant to you. And of course, it's going to reduce your trading fees. So it's obviously, you know, valuable to you in some way. And a deposit bonus, I believe, as well, something like that. Of which I know that kind of silly, but I know that I know that some people are just harvesting those deposit bonuses. But fair enough, it's their rules. So I'll just I'll I'll just step out of that conversation because it's not not for me anyways. All right, so I'll be signing off there. I'll see you in the next one and take care.